We begin tonight with a major development in the Air India bombings case. The only person ever convicted in connection with the deadly 1985 attacks has been granted statutory release from prison. Indrajit Singh Rayad was found guilty of perjury in 2010 for repeatedly lying during the trial of two men charged with mass murder and conspiracy. He was handed a record sentence. By law, offenders must be granted statutory release after serving two-thirds of their sentence. Rayad had already served time in prison for manslaughter in connection with the bombings, investigators accusing him of building two bombs that were put on airplanes. 329 people were killed when Air India Flight 182 exploded off the coast of Ireland. Most of them were Canadian. Two baggage handlers also died when a bomb went off at Narita Airport in Japan. Families of the victims have been reacting to the news, saying Rayat's release is difficult to accept. I know he served sentences, but it's a very unsettled, unpleasant feeling. Uh, there's no justice. As I have said, he will get to be with his family under whatever circumstances or rules are prescribed on him. We don't have our family members ever, gone forever. So there's that feeling of loss and there's that feeling of injustice. Well, the CBC senior correspondent Terry Molesky has covered this story extensively and he's following this breaking development from Ottawa where he joins us by Skype. And, and Terry, uh, let's begin with the significance behind this statutory release. Well, it's inevitable, Ian, because he has served two-thirds of his sentence, but it will be certainly a bitter pill for the families to swallow. And the reason for that is because uh, Rayad isn't just the only one convicted in what was, after all, the worst mass murder, uh, the worst terrorist incident in Canadian history, uh, but also because he was the principal reason why his co-conspirators were not convicted, why the crime was otherwise unsolved, because he maintained his silence at trial and refused to name those co-conspirators. In fact, uh, even as it releases him, the parole board makes that point in its ruling, saying that uh, there's not much sign of remorse. Well, going through those parole board uh, documents, uh, as I know you did as well, Terry, uh, they, they cite a, a March 2013 report from a psychologist who says that Rayat still is a relatively high risk for future group-based violence, that he lacks true empathy and remorse. And despite the fact that he's taken some responsibility, they say he's still quite guarded. They, they seem to paint a picture here, Terry, of someone who is hardly reformed. Well, the, uh, the, the best quote about this really probably comes from the original ruling in the Air India trial where the judge said that he's expressed uh, crocodile tears about uh, the victims of this, but if he was really sincere, if he really did feel remorse, then he would be giving up his co-conspirators, but he won't do that. So that's not remorse. Um, the parole board in its ruling said uh, that your uh, shift to accept some responsibility is only partial and relatively recent. Uh, and uh, so it doesn't, uh, you know, it sounds tactical, uh, which is, uh, which does fit with Rayard's history, that he's saying what he needs to, to get out, but no more. He's still part of the plot. He's still not giving up those who helped him blow up this plane. And the system, of course, compelled to give him a statutory release. But in this case, they're imposing a lot of conditions, including, Terry, as you've seen, they say he has to stay in a specific place. It won't be incarceration, but it still won't be a case of him being free to go, Terry. Yes, and he's got some experience at this. He's been under tough bail conditions uh, after the Air India trial and before his perjury trial. Uh, but uh, the extent of that perjury really was astonishing. It was an unprecedentedly, uh, uh, it was a, a sentence for perjury of unprecedented severity, uh, which, I mean, I'll just give you one quick example. He testified that he did not know the name of the man who stayed in his home with his wife and family for a week while they were building this bomb to blow up Air India. And the prosecutor asked him, well, did you have the guy's phone number? And I said, yes. Well, if you phoned that number, who were you going to ask for? And he still maintained that he didn't know the name of the guy. That's why the judge came down so hard on him at the perjury trial, gave him such a long sentence. And it doesn't seem from this parole board report that remorse is genuine rather than tactical.
Well, this case, this investigation, this tragedy, all stories I know that you have followed very closely and we appreciate you talking to us tonight. Senior Correspondent Terry Molesky in Ottawa. Thank you.